so my next uh, lecture is uh, essentially matter effect oscillations in matter and adiabatic conversion. So uh, Wolfenstein introduced matter effects as refraction effect. This is the same as uh, for photons, which are propagating in matter. So they acquire the uh, refraction index. And refraction index can be also connected to potential. So you can consider the matter effect as propagation in the potential, which is produced by particles in medium, right? So this is connection of a refraction index minus 1 with potential. Now this quantity, deviation of n from 1, is extremely small. For instance, for 10 MeV neutrinos, it's 10 to the minus 20 inside the Earth and 10 to the minus 18 inside the Sun. And still, amazingly, it is important for neutrino oscillations. So, of course, the physics is the same as for usual refraction lengths. Uh, you expect bending of neutrino trajectories as for the light, which is propagating, or reflection. However, due to this small value of n minus 1, the effects are extremely small, essentially negligible. And uh, this actually refraction is important for oscillations because you need to compare n minus 1 with a quantity which is delta m squared over 2 energy. Remember we had this delta m squared over 2 energy. And delta m squared over 2 energy is extremely small. And in fact, it may happen that even these very small refraction indices, a deviation from 1, can be important. Now, remember what is important in many cases is not just potential, but difference of the potentials. And here the difference of the potentials uh, appears for electron and muon neutrino due to this charge current scattering of electron neutrinos on electrons. This diagram in usual medium is present for electron neutrinos, but not for muon and tau neutrino. Of course, you have contribution due to Z exchange. However, it is the same for, for electron, muon, and tau neutrino. And since we are interested in the difference of the potentials, then only this diagram gives the contribution. And computation give for this value of the potential square root of 2g Fermi and the number density of the electrons. Now, important quantity is so-called refraction length, which is 2 pi over the size of the potential. This quantity has physical meaning that additional phase acquired by the system due to matter effect uh, is 2 pi over the distance L0. And this is L0 is comparable with the size of the Earth, just to have some, some idea what is this. Actually, it's also a very interesting coincidence, right? The nature, again, provides us with very nice conditions to study all these effects. OK? So is it refraction in that is greater than 1, or it can be somewhere? Well, it can be, it can be actually of different uh, 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 sign and for instance this potential is different sign for neutrinos and antineutrinos so the sign is different and the uh, neutrino can be faster than the speed of light no why uh, well, the refraction index changes. well this is refraction in index gives you contribution to phase velocity and then you can have and uh, so at low energy you said what happens in high energy when inelastic interaction is important <laughs> When inelastic interaction is important, you need to take into account this, because uh, then you need to have a scattering. And therefore, you will have not only, say, this refraction phenomena, but also absorption of neutrinos or disappearance from the flux. So at low energies for neutrinos, imaginary part of the amplitude is much, much smaller than real part. It's the real part of the amplitude which actually of scattering which contributes to refraction index. So there was the energy for neutrinos? Sorry? The but well, you know that imaginary part becomes comparable with real part at the energies comparable with the mass of W boson. So which means that you need to have energy something like for the Earth, for instance, like, like 6 TVs or even more when you have this. Uh, uh, you need to take into account in elastic scattering. Okay. 
Now you can compute these potentials. Now let me just draw how it, it can be computed. You have the Hamiltonian of interactions, which is responsible for these charge current interactions of uh, neutrinos with electrons. And what you need to do, you need to compute uh, this matrix element where psi is the state of your medium. And uh, to have coherence, the medium state should not change. Otherwise, you transfer some momentum to medium, and then you destroy coherence. So initial and final state of medium should be the same. And so you compute this element. And then uh, that is given by this potential, and then new uh, bar nu. So that's what you are computing. Now, using this Hamiltonian, you can find explicitly what are these matrix elements. And for instance, for gamma 0 in the current here, you will get this matrix element, which is uh, number density of the electrons. And this is how you get in your potential this uh, number density of the electrons. And the rest is just G Fermi square root of 2. So that's quite clear. Now, if you take vector part of, of the current, of the current here, so vector part, components of gamma mu, they are important when you have motion of the medium. And if medium is moving fast, comparable with velocity of light, then you will get uh, the contribution, which is Ne density. And this is V. This is just, uh, just vectorial component of current, right, in classical way. Now, if your medium, if you take this axial vector component, gamma and gamma 5, then it will be proportional to to this polarization of electrons. It will be polarization. Effect. But for most of the applications, only this term is important. And if medium is at rest, then this is absent. And if medium is not polarized, this is absent. And then what you will get, factor of 2 from this, when you reduce this to this form, g Fermi square root of 2. And this gives you number density of electrons. So this is how this expression for the potential is derived. But what is interesting, this is essentially a classical picture, right? So we are saying, OK, there's a medium. Medium produces some field, and then you do a propagation in this field. And therefore, you can compute this potential in the following way. So you can compute the potential taking Yukawa potential, because essentially only one this uh, uh, time component matters here. And, uh, and this is just a single, like a scalar field. And therefore, each of your electrons produces the field, which is just Yukawa, with the radius determined by the mass of the W boson. OK? Now, and you need to integrate this over space, over x. And this is vectorial, and this is vectorial. Now, this is number density of the electrons. And this is usual uh, weak interaction coupling constant. So you can compute using just classical expressions and integrating Yukawa potentials over all these uh, uh, scatterers which produce this Yukawa potential. In the case of uniform density, then after integration over angular variables, you will get something like this. You will get this expression. It will be r squared. Here will be 1 over r, g squared over 8. And this is from Yukawa. And then this can be done analytically, and you just get exactly this expression, which is not surprising, because in, at this level, this is essentially classical physics. Again, you have these electrons, which produce field. And then you sum up over the field, and you will get this potential. You can use this formula for more complicated system. You can use this, for instance, if you have some long-range forces. And people are discussing now matter effect due to some new long-range forces. And again, you can use this, uh, this, uh, these expressions. This is mean field approximation, which works excellently in this respect. OK? Now, what is the Hamiltonian of, uh, of interaction of propagation of neutrino in matter? We need to add to our vacuum Hamiltonian this matter potential, right? So it's just addition to the energy. Uh, so this V in, for three neutrinos has such a form because this component scattering on electrons due to charge current is also con only contributing to electron neutrinos. And others are, are zero. So of course, this can be obtained uh, 
in more systematic way, starting from a question of motion for uh, so starting from even Lagrangian for neutrino, electrons, and W bosons, and then go to electrons at rest, and then you can get such an expression. But physically, it's, uh, it's, it's quite clear. So you need to add to vacuum part of energy the energy due to interactions. And this energy due to interactions is given by this potential. Now, important notion, and unfortunately, you know, this always produces some confusion in this business, is eigenstates in matter. Because we introduce mixing in matter with respect to these eigenstates in matter. So let me clarify what is this. So we have now Hamiltonian in medium, which depends on number density, and that comes from, uh, from uh, potential and on energy. And so this is the form of the Hamiltonian. In the same way as in vacuum, we can diagonalize this Hamiltonian and find what are eigenstates of the Hamiltonian, but now in medium. So instead of vacuum or mass states, now we get different states, which are eigenstates of this Hamiltonian in medium. Okay. So in matter with constant density, these eigenstates of Hamiltonian will propagate uh, independently like mass states in vacuum. Okay, well, actually, vacuum can be considered as a medium, right? So essentially, this is the field of Higgs field, right, in, 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 in this uh, lowest state. And here, matter and vacuum, they can be considered on the, the same footing. Well, at least in the case of constant density distribution. And so this is what is written here. Now, why these eigenstates are important? In principle, once you know this equation of motion, you can just solve without any introduction of these new notions, etc. But they are very uh, useful because they can, we can get with uh, some answers or results immediately almost developing these notions. So why it is important? We want to introduce some states which are eigenstates of Hamiltonian or even propagation uh, in the following way. Suppose we have some neutrino which is produced, and then we decompose this neutrino onto these eigenstates of propagation in medium. And then we know that these eigenstates propagate with any, without any change because they're eigenstates, like mass states in vacuum. So they propagate without, without any change. So this is analogy. And so we know what actually happens during the propagation. And then we project what we have here onto the uh, state which we are detecting, right? So, so if it is electron neutrino, then we need to project this onto electron neutrinos. Questions? So this is the way to solve our propagation problem. We introduce eigenstates of Hamiltonian. And in many circumstances, they are the same as eigenstates of propagation. So they will decouple a question of motion. So we know how they propagate. And then what is left is just projection of initial state onto this eigenstate, and then final state onto, uh, again, these uh, eigenstates what happens with that. So <clears throat> mixing in matter this is another important notion. And mixing in matter is introduced in connection or with respect to eigenstates in matter. So remember, in vacuum, mixing connects flavor states with mass states. And here, the mixing in matter connects flavor states with eigenstates of neutrinos in matter. Okay. Now, the important difference is that this matrix is constant in vacuum. In medium, we have this matrix, which depends on density of medium, density of electrons, and energy. And so mixing in matter diagonalize the Hamiltonian in matter in the same way as mixing in vacuum diagonalize Hamiltonian in vacuum.
So now this is the key point that mixing in matter becomes dynamical variable. And uh, this means that Hamiltonian depends on density and on energy. And mixing matrix depends on density and energy in contrast to vacuum. And it is this which leads to all these kind of new effects in matter. So that now mixing becomes dynamical variable. We can invert the relation we have written before and write it as uh, the eigenstates in medium are given by this mixing matrix, dagger, and these are flavor states. Which means that the flavor composition of eigenstates depends now on matter density on ener and energy. So remember, we had this in the first lecture plot with boxes, and with boxes flavored in, say, red, green, and, and, and blue. And this picture doesn't depend on anything. So it's just in vacuum, right? So mixing in vacuum is determined by uh, mixing parameters in vacuum. Now what we have, we have new eigenstates, which actually connected to flavor states by matrix which depends on density. And now the flavor content of eigenstates do depend on density of medium and on energy. So this plot summarizes what we have just discussed. We have flavor states, which are common for both cases in vacuum and in matter. In vacuum, we have this Hamiltonian H0. This is Hamiltonian in, in matter, which depends on number density of electrons and energy. So we diagonalize these Hamiltonians and find eigenstates. In vacuum, these are mass states, nu1 and nu2. In medium, these are different eigenstates, nu1m and nu2m, because Hamiltonian is different, right? And therefore, you will have different expressions for these eigenstates. But what is important that for two neutrino mixing, that depends on mixing angle in matter, and this is mixing angle in vacuum. And this mixing angle in matter depends on number density of electrons and energy. So for instance, if you take the second mass eigenstate, at very high densities, it almost consists of electron flavor. When this state propagates to lower densities, at some density, you will have, you will have equal number of electron uh, component and muon component. And this is what is called resonance. And then when you go to lower energies, you will have mostly uh, muon flavor here and uh, less electron flavor. So this shows that for a given eigenstate, the flavor composition, which is determined by mixing angle in matter, changes when density changes. Questions? You said, when you say dynamic, dynamical, dynamical. And, Yeah, yeah, in the sense that it changes, and now it depends on, the it changes with density, it changes with, uh, uh, and therefore with time, when propagates in time, it changes with energy also. Is there an equation? Um, yes, so now I will go to equations, but, <laughs> <laughs> So well, for some reason, I, I don't know, people kind of, it's difficult. What, what is mixing in matter? I said people kind of sometimes. So this is some, some parameter which connects flavor states, which are the same everywhere in vacuum, right, with eigenstates in vacuum or in medium. OK? How large uh, should be to make uh, this? Uh... How large this? That also depends uh, what, is, what is high density, what is small density. So this is something what happens in the sun. So for instance, for MeV type or 10 MeV type of neutrinos, you will have precisely this situation. So in the center part of the sun, you produce the state nu2m, which is practically electron neutrino, and then it propagates and it changes the flavor. This Hamiltonian uh, is kind of independent. Okay, so good question because 
because you know if density change if if density is constant then it's time independent if density changes it becomes time dependent and so of course you need to take care about this and i will take care about this so but uh, it's interesting that in many cases you have so-called adiabatic regime when you can neglect something in Hamiltonian, but I will, I will show you what, what's going on. Is this clear? Yeah. I have a question. Okay. So we all use the extension for different density. So how about the dependence on energy? Okay, so this is for uh, neutrinos with a given energy. Because uh, so you, you do not change energy. However, if you have propagation in the universe due to redshift, you will have change of the energy, and then you, may ha you will have the same effects in principle, right? So it's impractical. <laughs> Sorry? Well, here the energy doesn't change, or it's kind of negligible change. So the energy is the same, and then you just change the density, and you will have this change of the flavor. Now, uh, and so, so now we have another degree of freedom apart from this phase. Remember, in vacuum, we have just phase which changes. Now we have also a possibility <coughs> of changing of mixing angle. And for instance, MSW effect and other effects, which I will discuss, are precisely related to change of this degree of freedom, change of mixing or mixing matrix, depending on density and energy. So now a question. So let's, let's do this for two neutrinos. So this is our Hamiltonian. This term we have already discussed. So this is matter contribution. It's diagonal matrix. And in the flavor basis, the Hamiltonian looks like this. So it's cosine 2 theta. This is sine 2 theta. This is what we had before. And the only what is addition is this psi, which is given by 4 potential energy over delta m squared. And to find eigenstates of this Hamiltonian, you need to diagonalize it. So and you find what are eigenstates. And uh, the angle to which you need to rotate to diagonalize this gives you the mixing angle in matter. So mixing angle in matter is the angle in the matrix which diagonalizes this Hamiltonian. OK, so this is the formalism. Agree? OK. So we can do this. And what we find is this expression for mixing angle, which diagonalizes the matrix. Uh, and so this is well-known form. This is mixing angle in vacuum. This is two energy V. Uh, uh, so this is a complete expression. And now the mixing becomes maximal when you have zero of this. And this is nothing but a resonance condition. So it's V equals delta M square over two energy and cosine two theta. So this is MSW resonance condition. And this is the difference of uh, eigenvalues of the Hamiltonian when you do diagonalization. So you find this, this difference of eigenvalues, which determine the lengths of oscillations in matter. Now, this is the form of these uh, resonances. So that what you see here is dependence of sine squared to theta m on actually ratio of L nu in vacuum over L0, which is n times energy. So dependence on n or over energy. Uh, for two different values of mixing angle. This is what corresponds to 1, 2, and this is what corresponds to 1, 3 mixing angle. So essentially, this is uh, graphics of this formula. And what you see here is the following. At certain energy in resonance, the mixing becomes maximal. The resonance curves have the widths which are determined by vacuum mixing. The smaller vacuum mixing, the narrower the resonance. So you see here 0, and you have the plane with negative this n over e. So if this corresponds to neutrino, to that what corresponds to anti-neutrino. So this is anti-neutrino plane. And if you have resonance in neutrino channel, then you have only suppression in anti-neutrino channel, and vice versa. Now, the resonance condition can be written in such a way. This is oscillation length in vacuum. This is refraction length times cosine to theta. So the meaning of resonance is that vacuum oscillation length equals refraction length. Or, in other words, the eigenfrequency of your neutrino system, which is inverse of oscillation length in vacuum, equals to eigenfrequency of medium, 
which is this one over refraction length. So the term of resonance is not just uh, we have this peak, but it's really resonance because this is coincidence of two frequencies, the frequency of the system and frequency of external medium, which is given by refraction length or which is given by potential and medium. Okay, so and uh, so this is vacuum, and then mixing angle in matter is just vacuum mixing angle. This is the resonance. The mixing angle is pi over four, and at very high densities or uh, energies, you will have theta, which is approaching to pi over two, and here mixing angle approaches to zero, and that actually gives you the picture with boxes I have shown before. So this is dependence of eigen values on the energy or density. And you see here this so-called level crossing phenomenon, which actually has been described, uh, published first by Bette, but uh, even before it was noticed by Rubakov and Kabibo. Uh, so this is dependence of oscillation lengths on energy in matter. And it is given by, it, it is just inverse of difference of eigenvalues. And typical behavior is that it is with energy just increases as energy at lower energies. It is just usual vacuum oscillation dependence. Then it picks up so that in resonance or close to, close to resonance, the oscillation length is maximal. And then it converges to refraction length. So here you have refraction lengths. So this is level crossing for three phenomena. And this is how the flavor of eigenstates change uh, with, uh, with, with the density. Remember this picture. This corresponds to vacuum, what we have discussed before. Now, if you go to higher and higher energy, you see how the flavor of eigenstates change. And what happens is actually the electron flavor, you know, tends to go to upper state. So at very high densities, you will have electron flavor in the highest state. This is how the flavor of eigenstates change in medium. OK? Questions? And this is constructed because you find how it is constructed. You find mixing angle in medium in the three neutrino framework. And then you know how this uh, flavor changes. Now, oscillations in matter, things are very simple. If matter has constant density, then it is essentially the same dynamics as in vacuum. And oscillations in matter is just phase effect. But now phase is determined by eigenvalues in matter. So the only what you need, you need to exchange mass states to eigenstates in medium, vacuum mixing angle by vacuum mixing in medium. And uh, instead of delta m squared over to energy, which determines the uh, level splitting in vacuum, you need to put here delta h, which is difference of the uh, eigenvalues in medium. And the formula for oscillations is precisely the same with exchange of parameters I have discussed before. And of course, this depth of oscillation now depends on mixing angle in matter. And it, can be and it is maximal when you are in resonance. So these are some just plots. You can do this experiment. You have source, the constant density medium. And this are a detector. Suppose you detect electron neutrino. And you have layer of medium of the length L. And uh, so if you have uh, uh, the spectrum, which is uh, just constant here, so this is the ratio of the of the spectrum or flux as a function of energy at the detector over this flux at the source. And what you see here, you will have at the detector this oscillatory pattern, which is inscribed into, uh, into a resonance curve, which is inverted, because this is for survival probability. This is for thin layer. This is for thick layer. It depends on the size of the matter. Now, this is for large mixing, and this is for small mixing. You have uh, narrow this resonance curve, and your really ratio is given by this green curve, and it is inscribed in this resonance dependence. 
So this type of the measurements will be done, say, when we are studying uh, atmospheric neutrinos by Orca or Pingu. They are precisely aimed at the detection of, of this type of an enhancement effect inside the Earth. Or long baseline, very long baseline experiments. Okay. So this is um, how the resonance oscillation looks at, at the, our graphical representation in the flavor space. So in this case, mixing is pi over four, and our polarization magnetic field vector is directed along the axis x. If you look back at the formula which I have shown you before, there is this sine two theta m cosine two theta m, which actually determine the the, the position of direction of this vector b, and uh, this two theta angle two theta m determines is the angle between z axis and this b, and therefore in the resonance where this theta m is pi over four, uh, this vector b, and this is two theta m is in this direction. And therefore, if you produce your electron neutrino in this position, then the cone will have a maximal opening. And so the precession will be in this way. And the point two, you will have completely muon neutrino or tau neutrino. Here you have electron neutrino. So this is graphic representation of oscillations with maximal depths in resonance. So these are the cones for different energies because the previous plot corresponds to certain energy when you are in resonance because resonance condition also contains energy dependence. And for different energies, you may have precession around this cone or that one or this one, and this is for resonance point. Clear? Um, so th then you will not be in resonance, but again, it will shrink. <laughs> maybe, maybe in this direction, I think it will be just smaller and smaller. You will just suppress mixing. Yep. Uh, I heard that MS3 effect is related to the local electric. So we will come to this. So this is constant density case, right? So the, we change energies, but the density is constant in, in these examples. Now let's go to adiabatic conversion, and the MSW is adiabatic conversion. So let us find a question of motion for eigenstates. Remember, we introduced eigenstates of Hamiltonian. Now, if Hamiltonian changes with time, so if distance changes and density changes, then Hamiltonian also changes with time and the distance, right? And in this case, the eigenstates of Hamiltonian are not the eigenstates of propagation because of time dependence or distance dependence of the Hamiltonian. So let us find a question of motion for eigenstates in medium with varying density. So what we are doing, we are just take a question. Well, let me, let me show you. So we, we have this kind of uh, Hamiltonian, right? So we have this Hamiltonian, but now this depends on, on time. So we take a question of motion with this Hamiltonian, insert our, sorry, let me come back. Uh, insert the relation between flavor states and eigenstates in matter, which are related by mixing matrix, which now changes with time. And then we will get the following equation of motion for eigen states. So we take again a question of motion for flavor states, insert this relation, and we get a question of motion for, for, for these eigenstates in Hamiltonian. So there are instantaneous eigenstates of Hamiltonian. We can introduce these eigen, eigenstates for a given moment of time. So for a given moment of time, we have fixed density. And we can diagonalize Hamiltonian and find the corresponding eigenstates. 
So for these eigenstates, we have the following equation of motion. If you would have constant density, then this term is 0 because mixing angle doesn't depend on, on time or distance, right? This is for constant density. And we would get a just usual equation with diagonal Hamiltonian. And so we have split of equations of motions for different nu m, nu1, m, nu2, m, and nu3 m. And this is like in the case of vacuum, our case of constant density. However, now if the density changes, we have this additional term, which is non-diagonal, and actually it describes transition between eigenstates. So time dependence of Hamiltonian leads to transitions from eigenstates, which is not possible in vacuum. We have no transition between nu1 and nu2. And it is not possible in matter with constant density. However, if Hamiltonian depends on time, you have this transition between eigenstates. Now, however, if density changes slowly enough so that this term is much smaller than the difference of uh, uh, these diagonal elements on, on this matrix, you can neglect this, this, uh, this second term due to time dependence. And then you will arrive to our usual Hamilton, uh, usual equation of motion when these eigenstates propagate independently because this is diagonal and therefore your equation of motion splits into three independent equations. So if this condition is satisfied, we can neglect transitions between eigenstates. And this is the essence of adiabatic transitions. If density changes slowly, we can neglect this second term in evolution equation. And our equation reduces to just a standard equation for eigenstates when uh, they lead to decoupling of equations. Why the transition between I, IM and JM should be um, adiabatic? This is because. Under this condition, mm -hmm. my equation of motion becomes like this. So this is diagonal. So what you have here, this is column of three neutrinos. This is column for three neutrinos. And this is diagonal matrix. And therefore, you will get three independent equations. So which means that nu1, nu2, and nu3 will have independent equations, not connected. What is the relationship between adiabaticity between the transition in the with the, uh, without the time dependence or the? Well, it's usual notion of adiabaticity. Uh, uh, so the system has certain behavior if, so you have the system and you have external conditions. And if external conditions slow, uh, change very slowly, then it's just a usual notion of adiabaticity. Mm -hmm. Change slowly. Yeah, so if external conditions to your system change slowly, then you have this adiabatic. Conditions. So here h diagonal is a function of time. What? h diagonal is a function of uh, is time. Well, this two, yes, they also depend on time. Uh, yes, it's not constant. Yeah, yeah but it, it, it depends. So this also depends on time. But uh, what is important that the equations of motion split. So you have instead of one connected equation with with three uh, wave functions, three different equations which are independent. OK? Clear? Mm -hmm. The condition also can be satisfied for resonance case. So your previous example of resonance. Yes, yeah. So resonance is just one point. And so if you have change of the density, at some densities, your resonance condition can be satisfied. I will show you this, what, what's going on. Agree? So you see why kind of notion of eigenstates in, in matter are important. So using this, you can formulate this adiabaticity condition. Now, so these are uh, what I have read, said already. This is explicitly a question for uh, eigenstates in two neutrino case. So you can explicitly see that this new of diagonal terms 
due to change of the Hamiltonian or density with time, are just given by derivative of mixing angle in medium over T. Okay, so these products of this all, this kind of adiabaticity violating term, the second term in my Hamiltonian, is just reduced in the case of two neutrinos to just derivative of mixing angle. So if density changes slowly, then mixing angle changes slowly, and then these off-diagonal elements are small, and your Hamiltonian becomes diagonal. So this is again of the adiabaticity condition. Yeah. Now adiabaticity condition I'm repeating here, and uh, and actually this is uh, this is uh, essentially repetition. And now adiabaticity condition in resonance. Actually, adiabaticity in resonance is most crucial. And the point is that in the resonance we will have the, the smallest splitting, and the oscillation length is the biggest one. And uh, so adiabaticity condition uh, in resonance is that. Uh, the, uh, uh, the length of oscillation in adiabaticity should be smaller than the size of resonance layer. I haven't introduced this notion, but kind of the layer in which uh, mixing angle changes by, say, 25 degrees or so, so you can find it. And the width of the resonance layer should be uh, bigger than the oscillation length. Then even in resonance, you have uh, a good adiabaticity. Uh, so that is again explicit expression for adiabatic parameter, which is determined like uh, of diagonal terms over the difference of uh, diagonal terms. Again, this is adiabatic condition. And let me now show you how adiabatic conversion occurs. So this is essentially MSW effect, if you want. So suppose you produce your neutrino at high densities. And I'm considering two neutrino case, so this state is described by two wave packets, which correspond to two uh, eigen, uh, states in matter. And uh, if density is big, then the second eigenstate has big amount of electron flavor and smaller amount of muon flavor. So if you produce electron neutrino, and that corresponds to electron neutrino, then this blue part, these green parts cancel, as we discussed before. And you have pure electron neutrino. So this is portrait of electron neutrino at high densities. Now, what happens if this neutrino propagates toward the lower density? This is what happens inside the sun. Uh, there is no transition between these eigenstates. And therefore, the height of this, or the size of this wave packet doesn't change. You see, everywhere it is the same size. And here also the same size. The size doesn't change. And this actually because there is no transitions between eigenstates. And, uh, and so therefore, the height of these shape factors, it doesn't ch change, so it's the same. And what is changing is flavor composition of eigenstates, according to den density change and according to mixing angle change. So density changes, mixing angle changes, and therefore, flavor composition of eigenstates changes. Can right? I yeah? Uh, can I apply this approximate adiabatic approximation when we consider the neutron emission in, uh, in the crust of the neutron star? Um, crust of neutron star. I, I will. So, um, I think so. I never made this estimation because I did this estimation for uh, for uh, new supernova neutrinos, which are emitted, say, in the early phases, uh, and uh, the adiabaticity is perfectly satisfied, at least for usual MSW resonances. It is not satisfied, or can maybe not satisfied for so-called collective oscillation effect, which I will discuss a little bit later. So. So this is, this is essential MSW effect, right? So what happens is that you have eigenstates which propagate in medium with constant, with, with varying density, mixing changes, and therefore flavor composition of your uh, eigenstates changes. And you see, although in the initial state electron flavor dominate, in final state, mostly it is muon flavor. So in final state, if you go to vacuum, this uh, composition is determined by vacuum mixing angle. Now there's extreme case 
so-called nearly non-oscillatory transition. Suppose you produce your neutrino at very, very high density, then mixing is suppressed. So which means that your new 2 m is mostly electron neutrino. It's a very small admixture of muon neutrino. And the second component, I even haven't shown it, is very small. So the second wave packet has a very small size. OK? Now, when it propagates in toward the lower density, you will have at some point this situation, which corresponds to resonance. And you see here, you have a practically equal number of muon flavor and electron flavor. And then uh, at the surface of the, of the sun, you will have uh, something like this. So essentially, your new 2m is transformed into new 2. So the mixing is determined by vacuum mixing angle here. And uh, in vacuum, this admixture of electron neutrino is just given by sine squared theta in two neutrino approach. So, so density of the electron changes, if the density of electron changes slowly, yeah. then we can have the um, conversion. Yeah, so this is the conversion which you so have. This is not, uh, because in, in the beginning you had electron neutrino state, yes. and then at the end, the probability to find the electron neutrino is given by this sine square theta. And if theta is small, then you will have strong suppression of initial electron neutrino, and mostly you will have muon neutrino here. For this case, even, even if in this case, we also have the conversion. Well, this is conversion. Uh -huh. Con this, is, this is actually adiabatic conversion, what is called MSW effect. I didn't tell anything about oscillations, because uh, in the previous case, let me show you back, uh, you have still some, um, some second eigenstate, and uh, you see you have these this green parts. And of course, they will have some interference, and they produce also oscillations. So you will have overlap of two effects. One is related to change of the flavor of eigenstate. And the second is you have also phase shift or phase difference in change, and therefore you will have oscillation. You have overlap of two effects. So um, let me show you. This is just a static picture of what you had before. And this is special picture what you will have. So um, you will have this smooth change of average because of density change in the case of adiabatic conversion, but you also have some oscillatory effects. So you will have your final dependence of probability on distance of this form. Now, if you would have this condition when mostly you have only one essentially eigenstate, then nothing to interfere. You will just have this so-called non-oscillatory transition. And uh, you would get simply like something like this red part, a smoothly change of the flavor which follows the density change. And actually, this is the resonance point. So at this point, here you have a resonance point, and you have equal number of different neutrino flavors. Sorry, uh, what do you say about the red line? Like so, well, this red line is average here. and. Uh, these uh, solid lines are just, just, uh, uh, just the, the band in which you have uh, oscillatory pattern inscribed. But yeah. The minimum distance minus four and the four. Well, this is with respect to resonance. I put zero in resonance, and actually, even oh. uh, what I put here is uh, distance in. Uh, in the density scale, it's a, a resonance density minus n over the size of the density. Actually, for this adiabatic conversion, when you have averaged oscillation, nothing depends on, even on distance. Everything is just depending on, on the density, or more precisely, density with respect to resonance density. OK? So this is some derivation of uh, conversion probability, which I will skip because I will do this in more simple way, actually, later. Let me, let me skip this. But maybe just say the following. Uh, maybe, maybe no need to skip. I 
Just say that this is initial state, which is electron neutrino inside the sun. Mm -hmm. And for two neutrino species, I have this formula. So this is nu 1 m, and this is nu 2 m at the production point. So 0 is production point. And this is the mixing at the production point. Now, adiabatic evolution means that nu 1 m go to nu 1, nu 2 m go to nu 2, and there is no cross transitions, right, because of adiaboticity. And therefore, I can immediately find what is the final state. And I want just, for this, I need just to substitute here nu, two, nu 1 m to nu 1 and uh, nu 2 m at 0 by nu 2. And I do not change this parameters because we have no transition between eigenstates and therefore and therefore amount of eigenstates is the same so this is the same initial mixing angle and then i compute the probability which is just given by this matrix element squared and i get immediately this this formula which you find in any textbooks or it can be written in this way uh, so this is kind of summary that I want just to underline. What is the difference between oscillations and adiabatic conversion? So that is realized in pure form in vacuum or uniform medium. And the key parameter is the phase or phase difference. So this is what, driving, what is driving the, the oscillation. Oscillation is the effect of phase difference between the eigenstates in medium. And mixing angle doesn't change. So it depends on energy, but it doesn't change even the constant density. Adiabatic conversion is realized in non-uniform medium, uh, uh, medium with uh, varying in time parameters. And so this effect is driven by change of mixing angle. So it's different degree of freedom. So here, adiabatic conversion is driven by the change of mixing angle with time. Uh, and uh, in general, you have interplay of these two effects, oscillations and adiabatic conversion. So it's wrong to call to say that inside the sun, neutrinos are oscillating. They are not oscillating. They have this adiabatic conversion. And so the effect, it doesn't depend on distance, on the radius of the, of the sun. So this is not the phase effects I was going on. So that was actually a complaint. And if you want, I can uh, tell you the story. So maybe I'll skip this. Oh. Maybe this one is added. Now, if you have quick change of the density and you cannot neglect this derivative of d theta over dt, if it is comparable, then you will have transitions between the eigenstates. And uh, in this case, you will get transition between eigenstates, which is given by, by such a formula, which is delta h over, uh, over this uh, uh, en, which is given by derivative of mixing angle over dt. And this is what is called Landau-Zener formula. And actually, it can be obtained again on the physical ground very precisely, uh, interpreting um, uh, these kind of transitions between the eigenstates as penetration through under barrier. So you have these two eigenvalues at the function of density. And when density decreases, your system is moving along, the, along these lines, along these trajectories, along these uh, curves which correspond to eigenvalues. Now, if you have adiabatic conversion and you are starting somewhere here and moving slowly, you just end up here. And there is no jump between these two levels. So the jump between the levels would correspond to adiaboticity violation. And so you can compute the probability of the jump knowing that you ha have this interpretation as penetration over barrier. And this is given by exponent, and then the width, so the size of this barrier, which is given by delta H. And over En, and this is kind of the energy which uh, drives you to move and jump from this barrier. So if you are moving quickly, you are not even able to kind of to embed in trajectory. You will just jump, like driving the car. You know, you cannot turn quickly, and you will jump from this trajectory to this one. So this is graphic representation. I remember you saw this. And uh, for adiabatic conversion, what you would have, you would have such a picture. So in the case of adiabatic conversion, mixing angle in matter changes. And therefore, your B magnetic field vector will change. Right? So it will change because the mixing angle is changing. And mixing angle determines the, 
the, the position of axis. Right? So if you change density slowly, uh, so your B vector changes slowly, and it drives your system so the cone angle doesn't change. So what happens is something like that. So this is just cones in different moments of time. This is like in the case of also spin precession of electron. If you rotate your magnetic uh, vector slowly enough, then it will pull the spin of the electron. And so you will have such a transition. So, um, so this is adiabatic conversion. In, in the case of adiabatic conversion, the cone angle doesn't change. So direction of the cone changes, and it drives your vector from this direction to mostly to this. Now, if you have adiabaticity, partial adiabaticity violation, then your cone changes. And the change of the, of the angle of the cone is just determined by transition between nu 1m and nu 2m. So this is partial adiabatic conversion. And finally, so that's almost done for this lecture. So let me just apply this for the sun. We have developed all this, uh, all this kind of terminology and formalism. And now using this, I will derive all the effects inside the sun just in one slide. So this is the picture of uh, conversion and what corresponds to so-called LMA MSW solution for the solar neutrinos. You produce electron neutrinos inside the sun. And what you are doing, you project this electron neutrino onto eigenstates in the, at the production point, nu 1m, nu 2m, and nu 3m. And they are given by the mixing angles at the production point or by these elements of mixing matrix at the production point. OK? So it's given by UE1 in matter, UE2 in matter at production density, nu E3 in matter. OK? Now, in the case of adiabatic propagation, there is no transitions between these eigenstates. And so inside the sun, nu 1m will go to nu 1, nu 2m go to nu 2, nu 3m go to nu 3. OK? Now, from the sun to the Earth, you are in vacuum. And nu 1, nu 2, and nu 3 are eigenstates in vacuum. So again, nothing will happen. You will have these transitions. At the surface of the Earth, what you will have, you will have nu 1, nu 2, and nu 3 fluxes, independent fluxes. So what is shown here is just loss of the coherence. So on the way from the sun to the Earth, you have even loss of the coherence. And so what you will have, arrival of uh, independent fluxes of mass eigenstates. It's, there is a subtle question about uh, this entanglement. If someone will ask, I can clarify. So inside the Earth, what is interesting? Inside the Earth, these nu1, nu2, and nu3 mass states start to oscillate. Because there are eigenstates in vacuum, but not eigenstates in matter. And therefore, inside the Earth, nu1, nu2, and nu3 mass states oscillate. And therefore, if your detector detects electron neutrinos, you need to compute how this nu1 is transformed or oscillates into nu e. And the same for nu2 and the same for nu3. So nu3 is heavy, and it is not affected by matter effect. Essentially, it decouples. And then you can immediately light the final formula for which describes solar neutrino oscillation, solar neutrino conversion. And you see it here. So take this line. So it's given by UE1 in matter, moduli square. And that will give you amount of nu1 at the, surf at the surface of the Earth. And then you multiply this by PE, P1E, transition of one state 1 to electron neutrino. And then you sum just over these three channels. And here you get this uh, survival probability, which is exact up to, say, 0.01%. So this is physics of conversion of solar neutrinos, dot. Complete. Now, if there is no matter effect, if you detect your neutrinos during the day, so then these probabilities are essentially reduced to just vacuum mixing angles. And so then you will get these probabilities inside uh, for, for, for the day. This probability actually depends only on 
initial density and nothing more. So essentially it depends on initial density and final density. Final density is zero. So this is a nice thing about adiabatic approximation. So everything is determined by initial and final conditions. And it doesn't depend on density distribution in between final and initial point. So this is why it is extremely simple. So again, this formula is exact practically, and the error bars are something like 10 to the minus 4, so that no need to do any, any, any further corrections. Now, can we change now to the last lecture?